Hello, this is FG, back with the E4 Ambinar, uh, picking up a little bit after where we left off. This is going to be a relatively short episode. I'm just going to take the last few missions, and I'm going to manually uh, do this. Basically because, uh, number one, I don't think the Lizardmen even have any uh, racial events associated with them, so it'd be difficult for me to get all of that done, and I just want to see what it does. Uh, yep. It's gonna be a real quick war. Yep. Alright, take the evening sun. Canor, a land of empires and kingdoms, and of the duchies and free cities that rivaled them. A land of small races and those that subjugated them. A land that worshipped a court of corpses, a woman twice the same, or a box that never even began to live. A land of wine, tobacco, luscious wheat, and gilded glass. A land of strife and of unity. And now finally, a land of the Jad. Alrighty. Declare War, Great Holy War. This will be the last one. Uh, I did actually grab this province from, yeah. I just threatened a war for it, so it wasn't anything interesting. Versions. Also, Verkal Kosnand is refusing to flip over to, uh, what's it called, Revolutionary, so that's really annoying. Because if they would, if they did, I could go crush the Revolution, but since they aren't, I can't really do anything. Uh, we'll occupy this land and see where that gets us. Uh, we'll just take this. Grant it. <laughs> Alrighty. And we have the Heart of Canor. What is the purpose of a body's heart if it lacks a soul? It is an important question, especially when examining the dame's head, the heart of West Canor. While the states here may lay content with their wealth and prosperity, it all lacks meaning if it is not directed towards Suriel's purpose. We must enlighten them to all this we must lighten them all to this truth. Get unity under the Jad. A lot of R and E's. Hmm. I think it's pretty safe to say that we've won the religious war. Unity under the Jad. For centuries, the Canorians have sought unity. At the Grand Summit of Eraenthil, they thought it could be achieved by mage-ruled peace. After the Wars of Rule, they thought it could be upheld by an elected emperor. Even in the chaos of the, Ly even the, chaos of the Lilac Wars failed to dissuade them of this notion. For all of their struggling was in vain. True unity can only be achieved under Suriel's light by following the tenets of the Jad. Now, finally, may they know unity. Put it in Ambenacost, then Ambenarian and administration. Well, Ambenar has successfully been successfully unified into one state 
under our rule, the nation's diversity was its strength, and we should not forget that fact. An Anbenikos surreal sun now shines above a city which seems a microcosm of, an, of all of Halon. We should ensure our entire empire follows a similar model, every person and people united in labor and embodying Suriel's glory. Alrighty. Well, I think that's going to be about it for that. I am going to pause here and fire the events, and I will be right back. Alright, I'm back. What does Suriel see when he looks down upon the world he blessed, when he surveys those devoted to his purpose. Come, let us follow his glorious eyes as it proceeds across the sky. Rising out of the Inyasin mist, the first to greet it are the whalers of Phaeton's air balloons, and even the most uneducated and gruff among them intones the morning's prayers as they reel their harpoons back. But we should quickly move on. Soon those wisps of cloth and fire are in the sky are dwarfed by the rising spires of Tianlo. And the once capital of once Yashen, Yanshen, now yet another shining jewel amidst the Jad Empire's crown. Hundreds of thousands of souls rise in song and are mumbled words to greet it. From a eunuch bureaucrat pausing amidst fervid calculations on the last census, to a pilgrim from Ekka who has crossed almost half the world to pray at the Sunrise Temple, to a trader finishing their delivery of Kenorian wine. Whatever the language, the message is the same. Thanks, Suriel, who gives us light for another day, in which his his in which to pursue his purpose and serve his cause. The sun rises in the sky as it crosses Hales. In its growing glory, you can see how it supplies the energy needed to support vast rice paddies and even vaster jungles. The sun monks of the Gia salute it in their sparring. The sun elf than blood of our Welkin's Kalino family stirs at its passage. Even the dwarves of Verkal Ozevar, deep below the ground, praise it in Suriel when its rays reach the peaks of the Fokau. No god but Suriel. Yep. Yeah, sorry I'm not gonna do this, be able to really do this mission tree, but the tolerance of all the races is sort of uh, not great. We'd have to go conquer all this as well to get uh, the Ruinborn. So, yeah. The Eternal Sun too. The sun shines on. None of Hales's great cities greet Suriel's radiance quite like Ayat's Raleir does. A massive metropolis, unique in all Halan, the millions of souls that call it that call its great palaces, its vast slums, the very abodes of the Quarter of the Sun's home, watch them as they all turn their hearts towards him and his sun in the sky above. On the Golden Ambon, the administrator in charge of the next Divine Symposium imagines how it shall light up the herald when Aralesa calls all to order. Amidst the school of radiant wisdom, two scholars in fierce debate pause the intellectual vitriol they are hurling at one another, all in the name of better understanding Suriel's truth, of course, and to join together in prayers that are due to him. Faster now, we cross into Rahen, watch as it lights up Sryan, and how one small pocket thereof remains in shadow. Watch as it illuminates Tungayasa, renewing its oracle's connection with Suriel. Watch as it reaches every palace of Denijansar in turn, and those along the Dembasa beyond, adding a translucent glory to a complement to complement their inherent majesty, and Jadar is his prophet. The Eternal Sun 3. The sun shines on. Finally it reaches Ebusu, the mountain of clear sight, or perhaps it is better said, it returns to Ebutsu 2. For although Suriel has protected the planet for millennia, it is here, and here alone, that he revealed his truths to Jadar. Can you picture it? One desert elf, unsure of his past, unsure of his future, standing atop a vast mountain, lit up and enlightened. Now look, thousands of pilgrims climb the mountain each hour, braving Suriel's scorching desert heat to place their feet or paws where, Jer where Jadar once stood. And although all know what Jadar learned atop this mountain, we will, no we will be forever left to wonder whether he could have pictured this, the vast empire his Jadari have now become. Let us imagine he joins us in spirit now, as we follow the sun to the target of his conquest, Bulwar. Begin with Azkasur, the site of 
the, the first great temple to Suriel, that inspires and renews our faith every day. See the toiling gnolls who work as pilgrim guiders and caravan guards. Then look at once at what was once Surian. Recall Jadar's fury at their arrogant demands as he recovered from his wounds and slaying the devourer of sun. And mark how Jadnazar surpasses the old city in every respect. Can you imagine, undoubtedly, the quiet pride Jadar would take, and every soldier resting from their duties within the Surrealic barracks, every officer studying his old campaigns, and the Empire's more recent ones in the Jadnazar Academy, and every fiercely vigilant guard atop the Herald's Wall. Even as they know the entire continent follows the light of Suriel, his herald. Much has changed since Jadar called the dispersed desert legions together. With a vision in mind and the claim of his blood, but little has been forgotten. His truth is the Jad. The sun shines on, but Jadar did not stop at Jadnazar, and neither shall we. Follow the sun as it lights sparkles on the mighty Saran and the golden highway beside it. As we reach Bulwar, note the way the light is reflected differently by granite of the old temples, which date to the first days of Suriyalic worship and the newer marble shrines funded by the wealth of Brisson. Note, as well, how all are constantly filled by legions of the devoted. Let us join the sun as it beats down upon a dow pulling out of Brisson, sailing the sun's sea, arriving finally at Port Jahair, and do spare a moment to wonder about that old conqueror, how he would feel to see his old empire now infinitely surpassed. But just a single moment, for as the sun covers Kanor, the Jad Empire's glory comes fully into focus. Ambinar, which has always meant unity despite its fractious and fractured reality, now finally understands its own name. Hear the bells of Telum ring to mark its passage. And if you're feeling brave, follow the, as the light pours into countless artificer laboratories where Suryo's purpose is pursued in directions not, represe not representable by any heretofore known geometry. At least Suryo's enlightened souls have stopped obsessing over a box. Eternal Sun 5. The sun shines on. Across the dame's head now... And do not be distracted by the wealth that pours into it, as all of it shall ultimately serve, the per serve to further the glory of Suriel. It is more permissible to be distracted by the Tower of Adrael and the monumental buildings of Anne Benicost, which seem to almost scrape the sun as it passes over them. But never imagine that those that reside within these skyscrapers actually draw closer to Suriel. To ascend to him requires service in his crusade, not simply rising above the land. You may have expected this next vision, but as you spotted their wine bottles refreshing Salahad wanderers and spurring Rahenni philosophers to new heights, but nothing can quite prepare you to see the vast vineyards of Rubenair and Laurentine. If you look closely at Leaf and Grave, you, may you might imagine you can see the process that distills Suriel's light into the drinks that embody his warmth and guide every soul towards his work. We near the end of our journey now, but do not fear. Suriel's light is ever, never ending. We are left with one last reminder of this as the sun turns orange red, reaching the sunset temple at Venael. Thinking back to those elves of yore, the fear and uncertainty that lay before them, even after Muna spied this isle, and know that Suriel, and Suriel alone, was with them, guiding them, shaping them, just as he guides and shapes us. We must leave the sun as it reaches the apex of its beauty, even at the moment, it descends to its nadir, plunging into the sea. But fear not, it shines bright Nayland here beyond, as souls too there worship Suriel with fervor, with the fervor he deserves. And from this temporary darkness comes eternal light. Already the sun rises above Hales, beginning this voyage of beauty and wonder anew. And so this pattern shall repeat, with every sunrise and every sunset, for every soul and every heart in the Jad Empire eternally. Forever and ever, the sun shall never set on the Jad Empire. And we get the Rezon Sacred, which gives... Yep, that. Which gives us a 90% admin efficiency. Well, that's a Jad Empire campaign. Not, unfortunately, uh, can't really do this mission, which is unfortunate. But I found it a very enjoyable. We conquered all of Hales... Basically all of Hales. 
from, uh, what is it, Dagoon, all the way down to the Gata. From Tianla, all the way to Vinayil. And then we have the entire Dame Zed. Truly. Sun never sets on the Jad Empire. Well, I thank you all for watching this series. It's definitely been one of the longest campaigns I've done. You guys will have to check whether this or uh, Beyond Fong is longer. I believe this was certainly a lot more impressive than that. Uh, I guess we can look over a few last things before we finish. Uh, Income-wise, uh, you know, 11,000. Overview. Okay, let's look at everything. Country, ideas, 49, yep. Power projection, absolutism, score comparison. We are number one by a country mile. Well, rent is obviously dead. Score through the ages. We did not have the best in the Green Tide, had the second best in the Age of Unraveling, a lot in the Witch Kings, whole ton in the Age of Artificers. Yeah. Technology, 100 innovativeness, uh, tech leaders and admin, everything else. Only one close are these guys, who... Religions. Here's the big one. 1,400 provinces. We haven't fully converted everything in our lands, but that would not take too long to do. Uh, territories, province overview. The best province we have is probably Tianla. Although Moon Mount's also pretty good. Yeah, Moon Mount might be our, one of our better ones. Seventy-four development shares it with Anne Benicost. Yep. Province development. Avdal Tungar is our best province, but that's a whole. Telgir is great, and Benicost, Moon Mount. Colonies, Northern Provinces, Advisors. We've got great advisors. Have great generals as well. Six Siege. Obviously, we still have our second ruler. Uh, this guy doesn't really count. He only ruled for a day. Great projects, we have a ton of those. Military, morale-wise, we're not actually the best. Discipline-wise, we are the best. Ruffled only by Ivar, Siege Ability, 104. Defensiveness, 20%. Professionalism, 100%. Tradition, 99. Armies. We have a force limit of 3.5 million. The only people that are even close are the Lake Federation. Navy-wise, we're not too impressive, but... Have the biggest navy, didn't focus on it. Have lost a grand total of 7.5 million soldiers. Naval losses, lost 129 ships. A lot of heavies. Income. Let me look at this. Is there anything else good? Trade nodes. Uh, local. We have the Golden Highway is one 
of our best trade nodes. It all comes into here, comes into here, which comes into Brisson, which goes into the Har, which goes into Everthil, which goes into Ambenacost. goes over to Dane's head. Uh, trade is kind of weird right now, but believe me, we make a ton of money. Um, yep. None of our trade actually goes to the Dwarvars. Well, some of it does. But that's alright. We could fix that with enough time. Trade nodes, trade goods, strategic goods, market share. We have porcelain, silk, tea, cotton, paper, grain, cloth, wine, exotic wood, glass, livestock, dyes, salt, coal. Uh, it's easier to just talk about the things we don't have. Uh, serpent's bloom, coca, slaves, fungi. Where do we have slaves? Mithril fur clothes, which basically no one has. Alrighty, centers of trade. Yep. Alrighty. Well, I think that'll be it for the Tadar Empire campaign. I thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. It has definitely been a ride. The last bits were kind of boring. Although at least the war with Corvuri and Ashiende was sort of interesting. We have our little buddies over in Rubyhold as one of our vassals. Let me actually force religion. Yay, they get to deal with that now. Yeah, with enough time I could conquer all of this. It's, you know, like 60 years until the end. I just really don't care. Alrighty, thanks for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.